OK, so let's think about the graph of this function. Um, what can we say? So first thing we can say, well, there's an x-intercept at minus 1, 0. So let's mark off a few points. There's an intercept, right? The other thing we know is that there's a hole in the graph at 0, 0, right? That's from this information here. Um, another thing that I know is that at minus 2, I have this vertical asymptote. So we draw those, remember, as sort of a, a dashed vertical line. Okay? We've got that. The, the other thing that we can say is that for large values of x, this thing is going to behave approximately like y equals x over 4. So the thing we might do is we might just put in, put in this line just kind of as a reference. OK? Keep track of that. Um, this is probably not exactly right. We can talk about how to be more careful about this in a bit. Um, this, um, that line there is what's called a slant asymptote. Um, the problem is, the thing that I've ignored is that maybe I should be shifting that up or down. And if, if we really wanted to, you know what, we've got time, let's do it. Um, if I wanted to really kind of nail this down, um, what I would do is I would do long division. I'd say, okay, let's take 4x squared minus 8x. Let's divide it into x cubed plus x squared. And I say, okay, so I need to, first of all, do 1 quarter x. That gives me x cubed minus 2x squared. Okay, I subtract, I get 3x squared. So then I need to multiply by 4 by 3 quarters, right? By 3 quarters. And then I get my 3x squared minus 6x. I subtract. There's a remainder of 6x. So what that tells me is that I could write this expression, one way that I could have written this is I could have written it as 1 quarter x plus 3 quarters plus 6x over 4x squared minus 8x. Okay? This term here is going to get really small when x is really big because the numerator or the, the numerator only grows as x, the denominator grows as x squared. The denominator is going to get much bigger. So really I should I should have shifted this up. So if I want to be like super accurate, and again we're just trying to ballpark things, right? Because we're we're not even using calculus yet. But why not? I went to the trouble of doing that. So we shift it up slightly. We shift it up by 3 quarters. So we have this, this line going through. OK, there's our slant. OK. Now, what else can I do? Well, one other thing that I can do is I can take this factored form here. I can look at a sine diagram. OK? So I know that my function was undefined at 0. I know that it's undefined at 2. I like to put hollow circles where it's undefined. And I know that it's equal to 0 at minus 1. Okay. And now I just do some test values. So if x is bigger than 2, everything in there is positive. Plus. What happens when x is between 0 and 2? Those two factors are still positive. This one becomes negative. So it's going to be negative there. Okay? Uh, what about when I cross 0? Um, well, that's going to become negative, right? I had x squared originally, but there was that x on the bottom that canceled it. So that's going to become negative. Two negatives. Negative over negative gives me positive. Right? And then I get one more sign change at minus 1. So what does that tell me? Well, that tells me a few things. 
one of the things it tells me is that at this vertical asymptote, right, this is at x equals 2, if I'm approaching from the left, my function should be negative. So I should be heading down to minus infinity. If I'm approaching from the right, I should be heading towards plus infinity. Okay? And eventually I kind of get close to this, this slant line. So I should get something that looks like that. Again, there's one piece of missing information. There's kind of a, there's going to be a bottom, there's a minimum here. And for that, that's one of the places where we need calculus to get that in, okay? Now, what happens on the other side? Well, I'm going to come up from that asymptote. I know that I, I approach this hole, so from that hole, I must just be heading down to that vertical asymptote, right? I, my function is going to become positive on the other side of that hole, and then it's going to head back down, right? It's got to head back down through that zero, okay? So it's going to go through that zero, and then it's going to head down, something like that. And again, there's, there's a maximum point here. You'd need calculus to figure out where that is, but roughly like that. So you can get some idea of what the graph looks like. Again, we haven't used any calculus. We can get a rough idea of what that graph looks like. Um, I'll do one more example, something where there's also a horizontal asymptote, again, to drive home the point that 90% of the shape of the graph for rational functions you can obtain without calculus. Calculus is going to fill in some of the details. Um, so remember that when you're working through these problems, right? Don't get lost in all the derivatives. Get some idea of the general shape you fill in the details after. Um, that's going to save you from going way off track when you try to draw these graphs.